The scandal at the IRS took an unusual turn on Capitol Hill. The woman who heads the unit that was using keywords like Tea Party to target conservative groups was called to testify before Congress. Lawmakers wanted to ask Lois Lerner a lot of questions, but after Lerner made her opening statement, she pled the fifth. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws. I have not violated any IRS rules or regulations, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. And while I would very much like to answer the committee's questions today, I've been advised by my counsel to assert my constitutional right not to testify or answer questions related to the subject matter of this hearing. Because I'm asserting my right not to testify, I know that some people will assume that I've done something wrong. I have not. One of the basic functions of the Fifth Amendment is to protect innocent individuals, and that is the protection I'm invoking today. Now joining us from Washington is Lauren French, tax policy reporter for Politico. Lauren, good morning. Good morning. So it kind of seems like Lois Lerner wanted to have it uh, both ways. You heard a portion of her opening statement. It was a pretty vigorous opening statement. And then after that, she refused to answer any questions. What was the reaction from the committee? That did not go over well. You had Daryl Issa, the chairman of that committee, uh, and a few other lawmakers debating whether or not she actually waived that right for her Fifth Amendment. So she did answer one question from lawmakers. They asked her to confirm whether some written statements that she provided to the inspector general were in fact her written statements. She said they were. And then there was a back and forth of whether or not after giving an opening statement and kind of telling her side of the story, I didn't do anything wrong, she said. I didn't violate any IRS regulations. I didn't give misleading information to this Congress, uh, which is, you know, speaking in her defense, <coughs> lawmakers were debating whether or not she did waive that right. At the end of the hearing, Daryl Issa actually didn't adjourn it. He just put it into recess and said that he will call her back because he believes she did waive that right uh, to not self-incriminate. And I suppose that is still being determined, a lot of uh, arguments back and forth about what the law is. Absolutely. So you have the committee's ranking member, Congressman Cummings, saying she does have this right. She did not waive her right to the Fifth Amendment. You cannot compel her to speak. Uh, other Republican lawmakers on the committee saying that's not true. She did waive her right. Some trial attorneys have weighed in in conversations that I've had. And it's really a split opinion. Some people are telling me absolutely she did waive her right. And others are saying it's a lot, it's a lot more gray than that. That a courtroom is very different than a congressional room. And the law uh, governing that just aren't the same. Now, outside of the courtroom, uh, Lerner was ahead of this IRS unit that was responsible for determining tax exempt status for certain groups. And some are wondering whether or not she's going to be receiving any disciplinary action because uh, of what went on there. Uh, is that yet to be determined or is it a, you know, a foregone conclusion that at some point she'll face something? Well, for the best of our knowledge, she has yet to, been, uh, yet to be disciplined, but that's not something the IRS comes out and says pretty regularly uh, unless you're asked to resign. Lois Lerner is a civil employee. She is not a presidential appointee. So the task of firing her is a lot tougher than it was for former acting IRS uh, Commissioner Stephen Miller. The president asked Miller to resign and he did. To get rid of uh, Lois Lerner, the IRS would actually have to fire her. Now there's an appeals process for that and then a second appeals process for that. It's not easy to get rid of civil servants, especially at the IRS. So if she was being punished, that's not something the IRS would likely put out a press release for, but all indications that we have right now is that she has not been reprimanded. Now, she did go in and try to actually get those Tea Party and Patriot search terms off of that list. She, she told the employees in Cincinnati to stop using those, but then again, she was the head of the division, so it comes down to whether or not she's responsible for her employees' actions. Now, as this continues to unfold and we're hearing from uh, more and more uh, former and current employees of the IRS, we're learning more about the scandal, how damaging is this to the White House, do you think? You know, it's just really fraying relationships with Republicans, and it's giving them an issue to hit the White House on. Now, very interestingly, this hearing yesterday at the House Oversight Committee didn't focus as much on the White House. Deputy Treasury Secretary Neil Wolin was there, and he got 
a fraction of the questions that former IRS Commissioner Doug Schulman and the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, that IG, uh, J. Russell George, got. It was much more focused on why George didn't notify Congress earlier of what he found and why Schulman didn't take some steps while he was IRS Commissioner. But the focus was not on the White House. And that's because the White House has, up until this point, not been proven to actually have any knowledge of the details of the audit before the election or up until about April of this year. That's when the general counsel of the White House was informed. Now, of course, the White House's timeline has been shifting over the last couple of days, so there is a very real possibility that more information is to come, seeing as Jay Carney, the White House press secretary, has yes, been updating press in his briefings about different days. So at this point, the big threat to the White House threat to the White House is really derailing its legislative agenda. It wants relationships with Republicans. Uh, you had that charm offensive from the president. And this just doesn't help build trust within the administration. And it doesn't help uh, President Obama pass his legislative agenda. All right, Lauren French, tax policy reporter for Politico. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.